Welcome to this webinar and thank you very much for attending. My name is Marta Gonzalez. Uh, me and my colleague Karina Cabrita from the marketing department are very happy to introduce you to our invited speaker Jordi Petriz, who will discuss the state of the art flow technology and its impact on immunotherapy and leukemia. Jordi Petrist received his bachelor degree in biochemistry and animal biology from the University of Barcelona. Then he obtained his PhD degree in physiology and immunology. And since 2000, he joined the subcommittee on quality assessment of hematopoietic stem cell grafts. Jordi has authored or co-authored nearly 100 research contributions, some of them in high impact journals. He has been the president of the Iberian Society for Cytometry, counselor at the European Society for Clinical Cell Analysis, executive board and current course committee member at the Clinical Cytometry Education Network, and he joined the uh, Josep Carreras Leukemia Research Institute in 2015. His current work focuses on linking stemness with ABC transporters, He's studying several genes involved in different aspects of stem cell activation, including some that encode for multidrug resistant transporters and others that regulars regulate self renewal and differentiation. Jordi, welcome and thank you for this webinar. Thank you very much for this uh, nice introduction. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to explain our current advances in leukemia and immunotherapy at the Josep Carreras Leukemia Research Institute. In 2010, the Josep Carreras Foundation, together with the Generalitat de Catalunya, Government of Catalonia, launched an historic and unprecedented uh, project, the first European research center devoted exclusively to leukemia and other malignant blood diseases, and uh, one of the few that exist uh, in the world. The Josep Carreras Leukemia Research Institute is a center uh, located uh, in Barcelona and uh, also without uh, precedent uh, and with researchers from all around uh, the world and employ the most innovative uh, technologies to fight uh, against the leukemia. This is the, the main uh, the main uh, building at the Josep Carreras Institute and uh, we have a excellent uh, facilities to develop our uh, research in, in the field of leukemia, lymphoma and other hematological uh, uh, diseases. One year ago uh, the Josep Carreras Institute uh, and Cytognos started a collaboration for the constitution of a joint uh, cytometry unit and through this uh, research unit and the Josep Carreras Institute and Cytognos will strengthen uh, their research activity and achieve levels of excellence uh, and scientific leadership in areas of common interest, in particular plus atometry technology and uh, research. And now uh, I would like to start uh, the first uh, part of uh, my presentation and I would like to give uh, credit to Nikola Tesla. Uh, with this uh, quote uh, to introduce you how the acoustics can be used to orientate uh, particles and cells. And if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and uh, vibration. In uh, this video, you can, you can see how particles can be oriented uh, and manipulated using a tunable acoustics. Acoustic cytometry uses radiation pressure forces instead of or in addition to hydrodynamic uh, focusing to position cells or particles in a flowing stream for analysis. Commercial implementations uh, to date combine both hydrodynamic and acoustic focusing together to enable high precision analysis of a broad uh, dynamic range of volumetric sample input rates up to an order of magnitude higher than, than is practical with uh, hydrodynamic uh, focus alone. As you can see here, by increasing the frequency and the acoustic pressure, the acoustic vibration, 
particles can be oriented in, in, in different patterns in this uh, specific surface. And uh, the following video demonstrates uh, the event alignment that occurs when acoustic focusing is applied. This uh, breakthrough technology uses sound waves for more precise alignment and higher uh, data quality. The prefocused stream is injected into the sheet stream, which applies hydrodynamic pressure to the sample. Combination of these two forces uh, results in a narrow core stream and uh, an increased probability that cells are passing single file through uh, the optical system, making this cytometer ideal for detecting cell proliferation, cell cycle phases at high velocity and uh, rare cell events. And I will start now with uh, and the approximation that we are using in my institution to study uh, hematopoietic stem cells. As you can see here in uh, this slide, uh, and this is a special, uh, uh, specially related uh, about how we identif identify rare cells by means of acoustic cytometry. The high sample rates that we need on the acoustic cytometer uh, allow us to avoid retinal lysis and centrifugation steps so that uh, we retain more cells and more rapidly detect uh, rare events. Uh, we'll call, we could not have performed uh, these studies with any other uh, cytometer. And uh, as I was uh, saying previously, one of the main projects in my lab is focused on the description and the functional analysis of healthy and leukemic stem cells. These uh, cells are extremely rare uh, both in, in the blood but also in the bone marrow and as you can see here in this slide particle or laser beam shift can result in suboptimal uh, excitation and this can be critical for the detection of uh, rare cells. The use of uh, flat top lasers is fundamental and provides high stability and sensitivity when compared with um, Gaussian lasers, as you can see here, used in the vast majority of marketed uh, cytometers. Importantly, acoustic um, cytometers are ready for uh, volumetric analysis, as you can see here in this slide, and sample delivery is achieved by positive displacement of the syringe pump, which allows true absolute counting of rare cells, such as C34 positive cells. Even at very low concentration, as you can see here, and we have compared the information obtained in the acoustic cytometer with a conventional flow cytometer and following the ISH guidelines, we can count uh, these uh, the rare cells, uh, even they are less than 10 C34 uh, cells per uh, microliter. Importantly, uh, there is also um, uh, the, the choice of the appropriate uh, laser is fundamental to detect uh, uh, rare cells. Uh, in, in, uh, in the last uh, year, we published uh, this, um, uh, this article in Cytometry Part A, and uh, we believe that in the future, most of uh, the clinical um, uh, cytometers will be equipped with uh, yellow-green lasers. And uh, this is uh, related to um, the specific capacity that, uh, uh, that we can obtain using these um, yellow-green laser, lasers to better separate um, specific dyes such uh, as uh, phycoerythrin, which is mainly used um, uh, in the ICG guidelines to separate the C34 uh, positive uh, population. Phycoerythrin is better excited um, using uh, yellow-green lasers when compared with uh, blue lasers. And that's the main reason because uh, we decided to explore uh, the capability of this kind of lasers just to compare uh, the excitation of um, the phycoerythrin at uh, using the blue laser and comparing the same sample uh, the, the excitation and the detection of rare events as you can see here but, but uh, in this case using uh, simultaneously the yellow green laser as you can see here the stain index is clearly improved when using uh, the yellow-green uh, laser. 
And, um, and as you can see here, uh, also the advantages of using the yellow green laser to excite uh, phycoerythrin. And uh, we compare and compensate it and engage the data. And as you can see here, we can clearly separate the positive population with less debris and less problems of compensation using the blue excitation when compared with the yellow green excitation. In addition, uh, this, is a, this is a different slide to compare the 7 AAD staining using to discard uh, necrotic cells that can be present in the sample. And as you can see here, we eliminate this kind of debris and these are also uncompensated data. Then this just to show the, uh, the advantages of the yellow green laser for uh, phycoretin and, and other uh, uh, probes excitation, uh, even they are combined or not uh, to uh, antibodies. And uh, also this can be very helpful to uh, develop new uh, ratiometric strategies aimed at the automatic uh, C34 uh, positive counting. As you can see here, we can measure at uh, using the yellow green laser the, the phycoerythrin positive events and compare this uh, this uh, uh, the detection of these cells at, uh, with a blue laser and detect here the true C34 uh, positive events, which can facilitate uh, in the future the automated counting of these uh, rare events. 10, uh, 20 years ago, I'm sorry, uh, we, uh, we published in Nature Medicine this is a very, very nice uh, paper and we uh, developed uh, for the first time a no lies, no wash approach uh, for C34 positive counting using a, a classic uh, hydrodynamic uh, cytometer uh, to detect nucleated cells, uh, viable nucleated cells, we used a, a a probe, a molecular probe uh, that can be uh, that um, can be uh, can can be used to detect uh, DNA and RNA in viable cells. And here is the combination with uh, CD45 side scatter versus the reactivity of uh, CD45 and the reactivity of C34, and uh, using. Uh, this uh, Boolean strategy, we can at the end uh, measure or count the C34 positive cells and compare it with the number of bits that we used in this kind of uh, experiment. This is uh, really important because uh, when we are using uh, red cell lysing solutions, we can obtain uh, important uh, artifacts and just to compare the same sample, the same sample this, uh, this, is, uh, this was done using a different uh, a different dye, the dye cycle violet stain and as you can see here we can uh, detect the nucleated cells there is a threshold to uh, to discard the non-nucleated cells mainly platelets and, and erythrocytes and uh, we can plot uh, this region to detect uh, by the combination of the forward the scatter and the side scatter lymphocytes monocytes and neutrophils and obtain the volumetric counting of uh, uh, the total uh, leukocyte uh, population. Okay, uh, in the next slide we can see the analyzed uh, cells and compare the proportion of cells, 99% of nucleated cells and the previous one was 97%, but the proportion or the true number of cells is uh, dramatically different. Uh, when we lyse the cells, we can measure this uh, number of cells, but this, uh, uh, this is associated with a cell loss, with, with a highly important or high, uh, um, uh, cell loss, which is near the 40% of, of the sample. And uh, this is uh, critical for the detection of rare cells, and that's the main reason, because we always manipulate uh, our, our samples by using these less aggressive or the less ag aggressive possible protocols in flow cytometry, which also allows uh, the detection of uh, functional measurements. In addition, uh, the, the using of um, this, uh, nucleate, uh, the, this nucleic acid stains take advantage because we can put the, the threshold in the fluorescence and, uh, and uh, 
also uh, avoid the threshold in the forward scatter and this can also take advantage uh, to measure uh, apoptotic cells because the specific cell, cell uh, shrinkage that is induced during uh, programmed uh, cell death. Uh, by comparing here, if we are using uh, the forward scatter threshold when compared with uh, the fluorescent threshold using uh, the nucleated cell stain, near 25% of events consisting of mainly apoptotic uh, cells are wrongly omitted by using this specific threshold in the forward scatter. And this is also uh, a, a very good opportunity to avoid, uh, to, to be able to detect the small uh, lymphocytes that can be present in the sample. A different approach uh, to, to study uh, whole blood is by using uh, by configurating uh, the violet side scatter and, and collect uh, uh, simultaneously the blue and the violet side scatter based on, on, on the different absorbance, based on the presence of uh, oxyhemoglobin in the red blood cells, we can uh, distinguish platelets, leukocytes, mainly lymphocytes, monocytes and neutrophils and here the vast majority of cells which is constituted by the red blood uh, population. This can be, uh, this, uh, this uh, approach can be easily used in less than one minute by simply changing uh, a, a three filters on the flow cytometer and then you will be able to collect uh, the violet side scatter on your flow cytometer and detect, and as you can see here, lymphocytes, monocytes, neutrophils. You can get uh, these populations and obtain the classical, um, the classical pattern, the classical scat scatter pattern by combining the forward scatter or the, side, the violet side scatter or here the, uh, the, the blue side scatter just to distinguish lymphocytes, monocytes and uh, neutrophils again. And use specific antibodies and this, uh, as you can see here, uh, we can uh, add to the sample glycophorin A or a CD45 or uh, and also a, a, a stain to discriminate uh, nucleated cells from red, red blood cells and, and platelets and obtain a, a, a pattern which also reproduces the classical uh, scatter uh, plot to distinguish lymphocytes, monocytes and neutrophils. This configuration can be used even we are not lysing the cells uh, to detect uh, C34, popul C34 positive cells, as you can see here. Uh, we use the same approach by collecting the blue side scatter and, and the violet uh, side scatter. And by plotting this region, we can obtain the, the classical scatter profile of lymphocytes, monocytes and neutrophils. But we are adding a threshold, a fluorescent threshold for the C45 and that's the main reason because we are not detecting here uh, erythrocytes and, and platelets. And uh, we can use this Boolean strategy to again detect the C34 population even the sample is not uh, lysed or uh, highly diluted based on the, the, the high velocity that we, the high rates that we can obtain using the acoustic uh, cytometer. In addition, uh, the, the use uh, or the using of uh, yellow-green lasers takes also advantage to detect uh, leukemic cells. And as you can see here, there is a comparison of the, uh, a hydrodynamic, uh, hydrodynamic uh, flow cytometer and the same sample analyzed on, uh, on the acoustic cytometer by using the, the yellow-green uh, excitation and as you can see here there is a very good resolution of this uh, clonal evolution in this uh, leukemia from the, uh, the double negative from uh, to the double positive uh, leukemic uh, population suggesting a possible origin in this uh, dim uh, population. Thus uh, the no lies, no wash methods uh, takes advantage uh, not only uh, to preserve the quality of the sample, but the, this this uh, this no wash, no lies uh, workflow uh, is less time consuming in comparison to your traditional uh, workflow, 
avoiding many, many artifacts that can come or can derive from the, the use of uh, lysing or uh, washing uh, procedures. Now um, we are going uh, to a second part in, 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 this, uh, in this talk and I will discuss the using of the alkaline phosphatase uh, stain to discriminate or to identify um, very primitively chemic uh, stem cells. This work uh, was uh, published in, in Oncotarget in 2016 and uh, the, the alkaline phosphatase is expressed at high levels in uh, embryonic uh, and other uh, very primitive stem cells, stem cells, not only leukemic but also uh, healthy uh, stem cells. And then we decided to, to um, develop a, a new assay using the alkaline phosphatase life stain, which is non-toxic, uh, salt permeant and fluorogenic and can be excited at uh, 48 uh, nanometers with a blue laser and um, the emission is collected uh, in the green at, uh, at this emission and uh, can be easily combined with uh, the staining with antibodies but using this uh, no lice no wash method that we have developed in in our laboratory this method was originally uh, this this stain was originally uh, developed for microscopy fluorescent microscopy analysis and we adapted this method uh, uh, to uh, the flow cytometry taking advantage also in the acoustic uh, focusing cytometry um, I, uh, I started my work in the Joseph Carreras Institute in, in, in 2015 and, and this is a, a case, uh, that, the case one that we report in the, in, in the paper published in, in Oncotarget and this was a patient which uh, was diagnosed with uh, acute uh, leukemia and as you can see here, there is a, uh, the time of diagnosis was in, in May 2010 and the, the, the patient uh, died in, in 2016. And then, uh, well, um, with the aim to, to detect this candidate malignant primitive uh, progenitor populations, we modified this original uh, alkaline phosphatase protocol for stem cell detection based on the identification of this, uh, this uh, molecule. Uh, over the, the period of, of one year, we have been uh, using uh, this method to, to study uh, uh, its activity in patients with leukemia and lymphoma, showing that uh, changes in the alkaline phosphatase levels can be used to detect rare populations of highly refractory malignant cells. Here uh, we show uh, one year history from a follow up of the same, the same patient, the same patient, a, a 27 years uh, old female di diagnosed in, in May 2018 with common uh, B acute lymphoblastic leukemia with normal karyotype uh, and RT-PCR was never detected uh, BCR ABL fusion uh, transcripts neither its um, isoforms and fish uh, was also negative for rearrangements and uh, on, on February uh, 2015 the patient had a second uh, relapse uh, here and the patient uh, had 88% uh, uh, of blasted cells. The red circles, uh, circles here indicate the bone marrow flow cytometry analysis to detect alkaline phosphatase activity in combination with uh, C34 uh, positive uh, staining. And as you can see here, apparently clonal uh, populations were observed at diagnosis at during a relapse, uh, showing identical phenotype of uh, refractory disease uh, as compared uh, with diagnosis. This is the second uh, relapse and the third uh, relapse. And this is uh, uh, the phenotype had relapsed in March, uh, in March 2015, and just um, to show you the apparently clonal cell populations observed at diagnosis and during uh, relapse. And, uh -huh. and as you can see here, uh, using our method, uh, highly refractory B cell acute lymphoma leukemic C34 positive cells expressing high levels of the alkaline phosphatase. Uh, were detected uh, from this period of time, from May 2015 to April 2016. 
and in the comparison of this well-defined and circular uh, populations consisting of C34 positive uh, alkaline, alkaline uh, uh, phosphatase high cells provides valuable information for dual parameter counterplots, as you can see here, over time to better discriminate subsets of our apparently clonal C34 uh, positive cells. Uh, this can be applied to this. This was also applied to to many other uh, patients, and we confirm the detection of these cells at diagnosis and the presence of these cells, this interested fraction, at relapse. And this method can be applied also for uh, the study of uh, Burkitt's uh, lymphoma. This was done uh, using bone marrow, and this, and you can see here, this high uh, level of activity of alkaline positive stain cells and this was performed also in the ascites from the same patient detecting again the presence of these uh, highly expressing alkaline phosphatase uh, cells in the uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, biological uh, biological uh, fluid then we decided to to uh, develop uh, uh, a a more complex uh, study and, and we decided to follow uh, different uh, patients diagnosed uh, in, in our hospital and this is the article that we uh, published uh, on the last year describing uh, the flow cytometric significance of cellular alkaline phosphatase activity in acute uh, myeloid uh, leukemia. Uh, we uh, next uh, decided to develop a specific panel for uh, the leukemic stem cell detection by adding new stem cell markers to uh, and, and we measured the alkaline phosphatase activity in a large series of, uh, pay of patients attended in, in our uh, hospital. As you can see here, when alkaline positive uh, uh, cells represent more than 12% of the blast uh, population, patients can be classified at the diagnosis into two different groups uh, indicating a worse overall survival. This is the classical stain that we can obtain at diagnosis showing uh, the C34 leukemic population at the C34 positive population at relapse and as you can see here we can detect a uh, presence of uh, around 40% of um, uh, blast cells with high levels of alkaline phosphatase at this population at relapse showing uh, a, a increased fraction of um, alkaline uh, phosphatase uh, blast cells uh, with high levels of this activity. And uh, by using this classification of the 12% of the total blast population we were able to uh, uh, obtain two different groups. This is a, the, the, the Kaplan-Meier curve for the overall survival, uh, including all, all patients in this study. And by measuring uh, or by differentiating the 12% uh, of uh, plastic cells expressing high levels of the alkaline phosphatase. And this is associated with a, a worse uh, prognosis and worse survival, uh, as you can see here. And this is the, the, the group with less than 12% of the blast uh, population and is uh, expressing high levels of the alkaline phosphatase. And this is the population, the group, uh, uh, expressing more than 12% of uh, high levels of alkaline phosphatase. And this is the same for the kaplan meyer curve for, for even free survival uh, by classifying uh, this, uh, this uh, by subclassifying um, these two groups based on the, the the levels of the alkaline phosphatase expressing cells. And now we are going to the last chapter, uh, mainly related to the immunotherapy uh, field. Because, uh, as, you, as you may remember, the cancer immunotherapy was named a breakthrough in 2013 and was the cover uh, for science and for nature. Yes, to control, try to control these immune checkpoints and block it in, in cancer. And uh, these, um, uh, these two uh, researchers were awarded with the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology, Jim Allison and, and, and Dekusu Anjo in 2018. Uh, we, we believe that we can uh, develop a, a, a predictive medicine by cytomics 
just to um, better advance the personalized medicine in, in oncology. Because, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, there is uh, a therapy dependent individualized disease uh, course prediction, and diseases represent um, some molecular changes in cellular system of an uh, organism, and this is uh, the cytomes. And cytomics study. Uh, this is a study of molecular cell phenotypes in combination with excessive bioinformatic knowledge uh, extraction and uh, these cell phenotypes results from uh, genotype and, and exposure and uh, our goal is to develop uh, individualized uh, uh, predictions that should be uh, greater than 95% to be, to be correct or right. We are especially uh, interested in, in, in PDL testing for anti PDL1 directed immunotherapy uh, because uh, PDL1 is uh, one of the ligands uh, for PD1 and can be expressed by, by tumor cells but can all, all, all also be expressed by, by myeloid derived uh, supercell cells. And that's the main reason because we are looking at the expression levels in myeloid uh, derived supercell cells circulating in blood or but also. In, in the bone marrow. There's a, a, a complexity by detecting uh, PDL1, and uh, there is a, a current controversy in using this marker um, because uh, we can obtain a differential reactivity um, if we are looking at the expression in, in tumors because we can obtain tiny biopsies and this can complicate the reactivity and the detection of the true positive. Uh, a tumor cell that can be detected in, in a, the small biopsy. Uh, the, me the mechanism of PDL1 is, is well known, and, and we are uh, uh, very interested in, in, in how uh, the myeloid uh, derived uh, supercell cells can um, shut down the immune system and facilitate the progression of uh, tumor cells. And they, can, this can be abbreviated by, uh, by PDL1. To evade, to evade this immune uh, mediated um, and destruction. And, and that's the main reason because we, we decided to develop a, a cytomic, uh, cytomic method for the detection of PDL1 using our no lies, no wash methods, and then detect uh, these cells on the flow cytometer. Mm, the, the monoclonal uh, antibody uh, market has changed uh, rapidly during the past uh, five years. And uh, we have a, now a massive uh, uh, deploy of many, many uh, antibodies which uh, can have uh, different uh, reactivities and, and, and this is uh, causing uh, some potential issues uh, with the antibodies because uh, we, uh, these antibodies can fail to detect uh, the, the true population uh, and this, uh, this can be a problem uh, generating frustration in, in the scientific field. I had the opportunity to participate in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, workshop in, 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 cyto, uh, in Cytoprac and a, 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 a special uh, and selected group of uh, researchers, mainly immunologists, were discussing the antibody validation by flow cytometry and I remember that the many concerns were uh, raised about the pd one uh, reactivity. And uh, most of the uh, researchers were complaining about the poor quality of detection using uh, commercial and uh, many others antibodies. But as you can see here, uh, we can uh, observe that the, the affinity of the pd one or, or the PD-1 antibodies can be, uh, can be different uh, with a, a different uh, affinity constant, as you can see here in this table. And these are the references for uh, these uh, publications and this uh, 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 reactivities. And uh, as, uh, as you may know, recent uh, studies have shown that the presence of uh, myeloid uh, derived the derived supercell cells in, in the multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma uh, bone marrow microenvironment can contribute to, to suppress the immune response uh, through this PDL, PDL1, PD1 pathway. And um, these uh, myeloid derived uh, supercell cells are a heterogeneous population that can be pathological, pathologically expanded during cancer, inflammation and infection um, that can favor the progression of the tumor cells. And the use of this anti-PDL1 um, strategy, anti anti uh, strategies by using humanized monoclonal antibodies in multiple myeloma and other uh, pathologies 
uh, can represent uh, a, a novel uh, therapeutic uh, strategy. And, and our study, well, study was aimed to develop new strategies to detect the PDL1 expression in these uh, myeloid uh, derived uh, suppressor cells with the aim to predict uh, the anti PDL1 therapy success. There are some uh, controversies in, in the detection of these uh, myeloid, uh, myeloid uh, derived uh, suppressor, suppressor cells, and this slide is trying to summarize. The, the antibodies that are uh, concentrated to uh, study uh, these populations, just to, uh, based on the expression level, to distinguish uh, granulocytic uh, myeloid derived suppressor cells and monocytic myeloid uh, derived suppressor cells. CD11B is, uh, was, was chosen to develop our panel, and as you will see uh, later uh, in our panel, the combination of the markers used is a little uh, bit different in comparison to these uh, concentrated uh, panels. Then uh, we decided to obtain a highly reproducible method for the accurate scoring of PDL1 positive cells. And why uh, this uh, PDL1 test? Because uh, this uh, uh, I was explaining previously, it can be uh, highly dysregulated in, in cancer, uh, provoking this, expansion, this pathological, pathological expansion of the myeloid uh, derived suppressor cells. And uh, this can test, uh, we believe that it can be used as a guide to predict response and, uh, uh, with anti pdl one directed uh, therapies, especially with this anti pd one uh, pdl one immunotherapy. And, uh, well, mm, this, my, this population of uh, myeloid derived uh, suppressor cells is increased in multiple myeloma. The immune phenotype that we uh, selected was based in this combination of markers, uh, and we also uh, by detecting the PO1 expression. And this method was using by combining different uh, laser excitation just to avoid uh, color compensation and facilitate the acquisition of the sample on the floor uh, on the floor cytometer and then we decided to screen uh, these uh, multiple myeloma uh, patients just to predict if they were if they, if they can respond or not can respond uh, to uh, the immunotherapy uh, i think that i will skip uh, this slide because it's uh, a, a, a a, another different summary about the, the PDL1 uh, blockade, uh, the different strategies that can be used to uh, try to control the PDL1 uh, PD1 uh, checkpoint, and this can uh, how this can pro provoke this uh, cell migration or activate or decrease the T cell uh, cytotoxicity. Here is the panel that we have developed in, 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 my, in my lab um, by using this no lice, no wash, no wash approach. As you can see here, we have the nucleated cells. We decided to stain the cells by uh, using the dicycle violet stain, which binds the DNA of uh, viable cells. Then we discriminate aggregates by using uh, the fluorescence, not the, 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 the scatter, because uh, mm, uh, the scatter uh, obtain it uh, uh, at high velocity can be degraded and th that's the main reason because we are always choosing the, the, fluorescent, uh, the fluorescence method to discriminate uh, nucleated cells. Then this region is plotted in the classical scatter uh, plot just to visualize or just to display lymphocytes, monocytes and neutrophils. The staining for uh, a HLA uh, DR, the PDL1 stain the C33 staining, the CD11B staining, and the different combination of the different plots. But finally, discriminate the PD1, the PD1 positive cells, which are uh, are mainly uh, DR uh, negative or low in this in this region, to identify the granulocytic and the monocytic uh, um, myeloid derived uh, suppressor cells in this uh, region. We were um, we have been screening. Uh, too many patients, and uh, we have developed a cytomic uh, approach by stimulating the presence of uh, um, uh, four um uh, by using uh, PMA. And as you can see here, there is the numbers of PDL1 uh, positive uh, cells in the unstimulated. This control was performed uh, using 
the solvent uh, to, to, uh, that we have used it in, in this solution for PMA. And this was after stimulation, uh, 10 minutes or 37 degrees centigrade. And as you can see here, there is a, a little increase in the number of uh, PDL1 uh, positive cells. However, we were extremely surprised when uh, some uh, patients after stimulation um, where uh, the number of uh, positive events for PDL1 was uh, dramat dramatically increased in comparison with the, previ the, the previous patient. With, uh, uh, as you can see here, the stimulation only detects this small uh, number of PDL1 positive cells, but after stimulation in a different patient, uh, we detected a massive number of PDL1 positive cells. We were uh, very shocked with this kind of uh, results. And as you can see here, this is uh, the myo-derived uh, supercell cells uh, and in a, a patient that was not responding to this, uh, uh, was not expressing these uh, large numbers of uh, cells after stimulation. But as you can see here, you can detect a large number of myo-derived uh, supercell cells, which are mainly uh, neutrophilic and, and monocytic, as you can see here. And, uh, well, we had the suspicion that maybe the PDL1 was uh, translocated from uh, the cytoplasmic, uh, from the cytoplasm to the, to the cell membrane, and we performed a, a, a series of experiments aimed at, aimed at uh, the demonstration of this uh, likely translocation uh, from the cytoplasmic uh, level, and as you can see here, uh, these are the cells which are non-stimulated and we were looking at the presence of the CD11B at the cytoplasmic, uh, cytoplasmic clip and after the stimulation and we were able to detect this, uh, uh, this marker, the CD11B, but not the PDL1 as you can see here. And as you can see here, the CD11B expression, but we were unable to detect the PDL1 expression at the cytoplasmic clip. And this uh, guided us to think that maybe they, uh, after uh, monitoring the different patients that we have studied um, and this, uh, this uh, series of uh, 31 uh, multiple myeloma patients, uh, we detected a, a full change in, in the expression. And this full change was calculated as the ratio between the stimulated PDL1 positive and the non-stimulated PDL1 myeloid derived supersor cells. And this uh, myeloid-derived uh, supercell cells, PDL1 positive population, was calculated as the percentage of total leukocytes. And as you can see here, there is a, a variation in this PDL1 fold change that we are detecting using this atomic approach. Um, this is just to show you the interaction in, in, in between PD1 and PDL1. And this is the interaction. Because uh, between, I'm sorry, PDL1 and uh, uh, immunotherapy, in this case, Durvalumab used it to, to treat uh, uh, these patients by using immunotherapy. And as you can see here, the interaction, the site of uh, reactivity of PDL1 and PDL1 is uh, near uh, the same hysteric location when compared uh, with the interaction with PDL1 and Durvalumab. And, and we believe that we are. Uh, targeting this site using our PDL1 antibody, use it for um, this kind of fluorescence experiments. But uh, if we are uh, measuring uh, the cells using uh, functional flow cytometry, we can detect that these molecules can can suffer some uh, conformational changes, and and we believe that this is the reason because we are able to detect this this change in 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 PDL1. And this is the PD, P, PM, uh, PMA increased PD-01 expression compared to unstimulated uh, multiple myeloma marrow cells from one minute of stimulation to 16 minutes incubation at 37 degrees centigrade. And we believe that the, we are uh, showing some uh, conformational changes that, ha that ha has, has been, have been described for PD-01 and PD-01 after interaction. And uh, we are collecting many, many information to try to associate this uh, biological, um, this biological change in the conformation of PDL1 to better classify and to better predict uh, this uh, the, the success of the immunotherapy. 
and uh, just to show you how we can uh, assess a therapeutic and, and antigen specific PD-1 tar targeted approaches before and after treatment with anti pl one Immunotherapy, but we believe that uh, diagnosis uh, and, and during the course of uh, immunotherapy we will be able to, to uh, make uh, specific precise measurements just to better uh, monitor the evolution and the possible uh, immunotherapy resistance of these patients. Maybe pd one is uh, uh, having this uh, folding and of unfolding uh, changes uh, just to be protected or just to protect uh, the, the, the binding or the targeting site of the immunotherapy and that's the main reason because we are detecting or not uh, after a stimulation uh, this conformational change that can, uh, that can uh, uh, be crucial for the evolution of, the, of, the, of cancer and leukemic patients. And in fact, um, uh, we are trying, or we would like to develop uh, new strategies uh, to, uh, to better understand why this mechanism of conformational change is, uh, is, uh, is active in this kind of uh, mildly der derived uh, suppressor cells and uh, just to uh, try to develop maybe um, a specific therapies aimed at, the, uh, at, uh, at provoke a stable state of this pdl one unfolded state. Uh, I would like to finish uh, now my, my talk uh, today, but uh, I will I, I would like to um, I would like to highlight the support of uh, of many many uh, companies and uh, especially the, the the autonomous government in Catalonia, the the, the Josep Carreras uh, Foundation the Catalan Health uh, Institute uh, and other companies such as uh, mainly Cytognos, uh, but also Immunostep, Life Technologies, Partec, Lab Clinic, Sysmix, Thermo Fisher Scientific. And, so I, and also I would like to uh, thank uh, my, my team, uh, uh, Angel, uh, Laura, Jorge, and I would like to, uh, to give a special thanks to Rafael Rosell, the oncologist that we are working now in lung cancer, also Andres Aguilar in, in the same field, and Teresa Moran in our hospital, and Jolene Bradford and Michael DeWard, which are uh, the inventors of the acoustic cytometer. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and now I will be very happy to, to try to answer your questions.